everybody. I'm Marie Dwyer from Cooks of Crocus Hill, and uh, it's our cooking school, which we're in our third week of shutdown for COVID-19. So it's a little lonely in our cooking schools right now. Uh, typically, we run about 100 cooking events across all three of our school locations. And uh, right now, it's a select few of us who have been in containment and in the cooking school. Uh, so today it's myself and Carl and Will who's doing all the filming. Uh, we're going to give you some ideas about what we're cooking at home right now. Really easy things for everybody to get involved in and they taste really delicious. So today one of the things we're focused on is roasted vegetables. Uh, you've probably all heard about sheet pan meals. Well the roasted veggie is usually one of the mainstays in those sheet pan meals. Uh, we're working with things that I pulled out of our refrigerator carrots, parsnips, cauliflower, and beets. So we're going to show you a few tips and tricks. Um, to get started, you want to just literally pull whatever veggies you have. Some work better than others. We picked a, an assortment of some root veggies as well as uh, the cauliflower. Uh, makes a beautiful presentation from a color perspective and they also taste delicious together. So to get started, we're going to start with the beets because the beets take a little bit longer. So what we do is we take uh, the beets, we clean them up. I'll show you that. We take, uh, I'm going to do them with the skin on. So I use a vegetable brush, I run them under cold water. We'll go over here. We're just going to scrub these beets a little bit just to get some of the dirt and the, the hair, the fur <laughs> off. And, um, so then what we do is cut the kind of the, the big root off. We're going to cut the top off. And the thing about these beets, you can use the greens later. You can do sauteed beet greens. You can work those in with kale. You can do them with chard. They are really, really quite delicious and they're super healthy. But today, we're not going to focus on that. Um, so for the beets, I recommend for roasting, we're going to do them about a quarter inch thick. And we're going to do that evenly across the whole beet. And these are really, they're pretty cool. These are the golden beets and they have that, that design in the middle. I just love these. Um, so slice all your beets. Again, we're going to come at this, cutting the root off, cutting the, the top off, setting those aside, and then coming back and slicing a quarter, about a quarter of an inch. Then we are going to put these in a bowl. We'll put the beets in their own bowl. Carl's in the kitchen helping me today and it's throwing me for a little loop but it is helpful. We're going to toss them with a little olive oil. Um, if you've got any olive oil will do. We're going to focus on this olive oil from Italy. Uh, one of our favorite vendors, Retrovo, a direct imports some delicious, delicious olive oils. This one's from the, the southern part of um, Italy. So it'll add just a little flavor dimension, which will be great. Um, so we're going to toss that in the bowl. We're also going to Put a little sea salt. So you just put a little sea salt on these. Flowerets, sure, that works. Anything, yeah. This also adds a great zip to all of the veggies. This is a tagarashi uh, made by Bourbon Barrel. We sell this in our stores. You can find it on our website. It's absolutely delicious. Um, just gonna toss that up, get your hands in there. Really, really work, um, work to get it all covered and coated. Okay, so this is what it looks like. We're loving the beautiful colors. And now we're gonna prepare a sheet pan. You can use a Silpat mat. We like this uh, parchment dispenser. It works really easy, super easy. But you just need to coat your pan with something so it'll release um, very easy when you're done. So, got the sheet pan. We're going to lay it in. 
We're going to dump our beets on. Then you want to spread them out so that they're in a single layer. Like that. Got the beets ready to go. And we're going to pop them in the oven. Thank you. Okay, so over here we've chopped up uh, some of the cauliflower, the carrots. Looks like we need a, a little bit more. So we're going to add a few more carrots. And again, you can peel carrots or you can, you can leave the skin on just as long as you've cleaned them really, really good with your brush. So I'm going to go over here and rinse this one. And again, for the carrots, you, you want to make sure that you um, slice them not super thin and don't leave them super thick because you want to make sure that they all cook at the same time. You can't, what you're going for is a, an even cooking time, which is why we put those beets in early. We'll pull them out and then we'll add them back into this in a little bit. So we've got the rest of our carrots. Uh, The last thing, this is a parsnip. So great uh, winter root vegetable. They add a little bit of a sweetness to roasted veggies. Um, they really add a different, kind of a, a little bit of a nutty flavor as well. And they'll, they end up with um, a softer texture too. So these are, these are delicious as well. Parsnips you do want to peel. This is a horizontal peeler. Makes it super easy. You hold it in one hand, you drag this guy down. Makes It just goes so fast. And the great thing about this peeler too is super lightweight. You can throw it in the dishwasher and it's, it's rather inexpensive. So on our website you can find these Kuhn Rakan peelers. Peeled parsnip, you want to cut the top off, cut the end off. Cut these the same way as you did the carrots. So thin enough so that they'll cook evenly, but not too thin so that they get overcooked. We'll just peel this up quick. And these were all washed before we peeled them. So, um, so just making sure that you're safe handling all your food. All right, and then cauliflower. So cauliflower, you can do it a number of different ways. We're gonna do um, kind of, we're gonna take a big flowerette and we're going to chop it into quarters and toss it in our bowl. You can also, I mean, if a flowerette isn't uh, super big, you can, you can toss a whole flowerette in. It doesn't really matter. Some people like to slice even steaks. They call them steaks, cauliflower steaks. And that's when you just, you come at the slicing, um, leaving them probably about a half inch thick, and they end up looking like that. But today, we're just going to do whatever seems to work. And right now, the fastest thing is to just kind of quarter those flowerettes and throw them in the bowl. Um, okay, so now what we've got is a big bowl of veggies that are ready to be tossed with our olive oil um, and our seasoning. So again, no real measure on the olive oil just depends on how many vegetables you have. You just want to drizzle, start with like a small drizzle, toss, and if, they, if they're all shiny, then you, you're on it. Then you, you don't really need any more. I sometimes, if I want a crispier um, veggie, roasted veggie sheet, I'll add a little more olive oil. So I'll, to be honest, I think it's a little bit better with more olive oil. With good olive oil, you can't go wrong. Um, then you take your sea salt, pretty generous with the sea salt. We're going to salt these. This is a kosher sea salt. Um, any, any kosher sea salt will do. You can see it when it goes on there. And then again, the tagahashi works great.
So we're gonna really kind of load that up. This adds kind of a little bit of zip and some smoke. So it's kind of delicious, but you can use whatever you've got. Um, some people just like salt and pepper. Uh, you can add just a little bit of anything. If you've got like poultry seasoning, throw that on there. If you have seasonings for fish, throw that on there. Whatever you've got. And now we're ready to place our bowl of veggies on our sheet pan. And again, it has to be a prepared sheet pan. Um, so we're gonna use the parchment dispenser. Love this thing. Also on our website is that dispenser. So even if you don't layer it in perfectly, you can just, whatever you've got, just put it on the pan and Dump your veggies on, spread them out. You don't want them overlapping. Um, you just want to spread them out so that they're not bunched up. I think we're going to do two sheet pans so we can leave a little room for the beets. So we'll put another one. see if our beets are ready. Beets look fantastic. We just, um, they're starting to, uh, to soften up and um, they look like they're going to be delicious. I need a little stump. So then you want to make sure that you get your beets so that they are surface down and they're not layered on top of anything else because these will continue to be the longest cooking thing on your pan. And you don't even have to do beets. I know a lot of people don't care for beets. You don't have to do beets. You can substitute, you can throw in, like I said, whatever veggies you have in your refrigerator, in the crisper, just use them up. Whatever you've got works. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'll probably add a little more salt. We're going to hit that one more time. Um, salt just brings out the goodness in all of these, all these flavors of these veggies. And we're ready to put them in the oven. We're going to pop them into a 400 degree oven and for about 20, 25 minutes and we'll keep an eye on them. Okay, so while we're waiting for our vegetables to come out of the oven, we're going to make a little sauce. And this sauce can be made for dipping the vegetables into. Um, you could use it. It'd be great for raw vegetables. It's great for cooked vegetables. Um, inspired by our friend Paul Kahn in Chicago. This is a little lemon aioli. Ours is a cheater aioli. He has a new book called Cooking for Good Times, and he has a beautiful, wonderful uh, aioli that's it's more real than what we're going to introduce, but this one is really easy for everybody to make. Starts with a half a cup of mayonnaise. So we're just going to scoop a half cup of mayo right in the, this is our half cup measure. You know, close enough. I'm going to dump that in the bowl. Next we're going to take we're going to use a little um, of this turmeric balsamic. It's delicious. It's um, healthy. It's good for you. Uh, and it also adds a little bit of sweet uh, with a little bit of tang. This balsamic is so good. It actually is great in a, uh, you can use it as, you can create a little shrub for drinking. Um, vinegar is, is a great healthy way to um, get your gut health going uh, and we carry oh, this is on our website too so now we've got the mayo and the little bit of turmeric vinegar we're just gonna whisk that together till it's nice and creamy and has a little bit of um, the consistency that's drizzly yeah like that and now I'm just gonna just gonna taste it. 
my fingers are clean. Mm, it's good, but I think it needs just a little bit of lemon. So what we're going to do is take a zester, our lemon, our clean lemon. We're going to grab a little bit of zest. So these are great. If you don't have a microplane uh, zester grater, they work for so many things. They work great for zest, which most things that you cook can benefit from a little citrus zest. Um, but they also work great for garlic. If you don't like to mince garlic and you want to just use this, it works perfectly. Works good for chocolate, works great for ginger. They're just an essential tool in the kitchen. We do sell those too. Um, but I also think the zest isn't going to be enough, so we're going to add just a little bit of juice. So we will take our hard nifty zester and we're going to cut the lemon in half. So we'll cut the lemon in half. And then we pop this into the lemon. This is our lemon squeezer. And then we're just going to add maybe a tablespoon, maybe a little more. We're going to whisk it again. And I'm going to grab the back of the spoon. It's delicious. Has a little bit of zip, a little bit of that freshness, brightness. I'm going to actually add just a little more lemon. And it'll be good to go for our vegetables. Again, you can serve it drizzled directly on the vegetables. Or people can just make a little pile on their plate and dip them in as they wish. But it is delicious. So that's our take on cheater lemon aioli. It's been about 25 minutes and our vegetables are done. And they're looking beautiful. And we're going to put these beautiful veggies onto the platter for serving. We need to do a little taste test. They are delicious. So good. Scoop them all onto this little plate. And we're going to do a final, a little bit of salt, a little more salt, just to finish them off a little bit. A little bit of cracked pepper, fresh pepper. And now, uh, final touch is the aioli. And it's simply so delicious. Dip it in. Mm, it's so good. And this video and many others are available at cooksofcrocusil.com under the blog. You'll find more. Thank you. <clears throat> I'm choking. <laughs> <laughs>